Trackside 6, sponsored by Turning Point Dental. Tonight, in this house of heroes, the stories have only just begun. There's fast and fragile. Robert Wickens knows. I have a feeling we're going to know you for a long, long time to come. From rookie of the year to the fight for his life. The biggest thing is, like, at the beginning, I didn't remember anything. The inspiring recovery from pole to Pocono and the inspiration he provides others. I'm riding the bike. Plus Graham Rahal's West Side story, while the Hunter Rays make way for the next generation and how an Indy 500 legend isn't about to slow down. The emotions of May continue right now on Trackside 6. Live from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, this is an RTV 6 News special, Trackside 6. Two and a half days of near perfect weather, and well, then we had this this afternoon. The skies opened up around 4:30, brought an early end to practice day three. Only the last bit of bad weather, though, as we headed to qualifying this weekend for the Indianapolis 500. Good evening to you. I'm Dave First. Brad Brown is here as well. We've kind of taken cover as the rain moved in this afternoon. A couple of accidents already in practice last couple of days, including one today. We did. We had one just right after noon today, 12:15 or so. One of the rookie drivers in the field hitting the wall over in turn two. That's the young Mexican driver Patricio O'Ward. Got himself out during practice behind Elio Castroneves and lost it into that turn two wall. Really hard hit over there. Car got a little bit airborne as well, but finally the safety features kick in, set it down on the four wheels. Award got out of the car okay. He was checked, cleared, and released at the medical center. Said he nicked up his hand just a little bit, and his Carlin Racing team will hope to have that car ready to go with the backup as they get set for the Fast Friday practice coming up tomorrow. Dave. Good to see he's okay. There are a number of inspirational stories each and every May here at the Speedway. This year that includes Robert Wickens. The Canadian is here this month helping his team in a very different way as his road to recovery continues. No one shook up IndyCar at the start of 2018 quite like Robert Wickens. When he pole at his first start. You couldn't write that. I mean, just, yeah. just to get pole position, even to be in the fast six as a rookie. And that Indy leading his first laps before finishing ninth, claiming the prestigious Rookie of the Year honor. This whole uh, rookie season has been a bit of a whirlwind adventure, but uh, hopefully we're just getting started. But then came a visit to the historic Pocono Raceway. All I knew is that I passed Pagano. For some reason, that was like very vivid to me that I passed Simon around the outside. They also tried to. From there, it remains a blur. Wickens, oh, they're going to make contact. Big contact, car in the air. It's Robert Wickens that spins. Ryan Hunter Ray was just underneath him. James Hinchcliffe involved. We have a major mess here exiting turn number two at the Pocono Raceway. A crash at some 200 miles an hour. The impact registering over 200 Gs. Through it all, Wickens is airlifted to a local hospital with a fractured spine, a neck fracture, and broken bones in his legs, hands, right forearm, and ribs. Today, he remains in a wheelchair. Can't help but think back to that day, and specifically a conversation he had with the safety team who tended to him immediately after the accident. What I can't understand to this day was I was fully conscious when... Talking to him. When, uh, when they got to me, and they actually said it through, through them for a, for a loop because I was so calm and collected. I, there was no stress in my voice. You know, he said that like people will kind of like white wallet and come to a stop and their heart rate will be racing, they'll have so much stress, they'll have a hard time speaking. He's like, but you were it's like talking like how you and I right are right now. And they thought that, you know, maybe this is that one in a million where like somehow he's fine. Because the first question they asked me if I was okay. And I said, Yeah, I think so. Hey everybody. Of course, he wasn't. At the hospital, he was placed in an induced coma for some 10 days with a couple of surgeries to stabilize his injury. But afterwards, one issue kept coming up. You know, I had this one moment with my brother. Obviously, I always had a blanket on, and I couldn't feel my legs. And there was a point where, with the drugs and with everything else, I was feeling my legs, and I kept asking my brother, like, what? what is this? And then, like, Trevor was just like, Rob, those are your legs. I was just like, oh, wow. you know, because I couldn't feel them and with the drugs, I just didn't think I had legs anymore. Right. And then, I, and then that was kind of the turning point for me where I was just like, how am I supposed to get better and walk again? I don't even know I have legs in the first place. Yeah. 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 Yellow one, you can do it. 
It set into motion a series of events. First, getting off the pain medication the best he could and begin an extensive rehab. I'm riding the bike. Progress of it posted on social media. All the while, Robert beginning to ponder one very big goal. You're a race car driver. This is all you've done. Yep. At what point do you say, I want to get back in a race car? What will it take to do that? It was early. You know, I, I, I couldn't tell you if it was my third question or <laughs> the first question, but it was definitely, you know, it was up there. how long is this recovery going to take type of thing. And getting back in a car was always on my radar. It's always what I want to do. It's still what I want to do. Getting back to the racetrack has certainly been good medicine and realizing that racing without the use of legs has been done before, most notably from former IndyCar champ Alex Zanardi. Because we're in effectively a seated sport, you know, there's nothing stopping me from competing at hand controls, obviously regulation permitting. Sure. Um, but, you know, there's always that light at the end of the tunnel that there's nothing stopping me from getting back into an IndyCar, even if my legs never come back. And that's been the big thing for me is, like, I will race again. I know I will. And that's the push. Ideally, he returns with as much leg response as possible. But the support from his fiance Carly Woods and everyone around the IndyCar community remains endless. The Indy 500 Rookie of the Year set on making a comeback few have seen before. I'm just so fortunate, one, to be alive. You know, two, my spinal cord wasn't severed when, when the surgeons basically gave us very little chance of the cord still being intact. And then three, I'm so fortunate that I'm getting the progress that I am, that I'm getting sensation back, that I'm getting some movement back um, below the point of injury. You know, it's, there's so many things to be fortunate about. Well, here's the inspiration. Because his story is so public out there, he's hearing from others the similar situation, similar injuries, and they're all thanking Robert for showing them that there is indeed a road to recovery. He says he's receiving messages almost every day. Still to come. I have a lot of plans, you know. I mean, my mind never stops. When it comes to growth, I'm always on it, probably too much. Graham Rahal's always been faster sharper and one of a kind now he wants the same for his customers brad brown gets a peek at ray hall's new rides and we're on the road in homestead florida where for the hunter rays yep it's like father like son how little six-year-old Ryden might be following in dad's footsteps coming up here on trackside six on our tv set This morning, join RTV6 for six hours of breakfast at the Brickyard. What do you like most about race morning? All the colors at the racetrack. Do you have a favorite color? White. 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 Ah, the milk. The RTV6 News Team is working for you. Race morning beginning at 5. This is May. This is RTV6. Breakfast at the Brickyard on RTV6 is sponsored by Duncan. Sipping is believing. With Duncan's new handcrafted signature lattes, America runs on Duncan. My Synergy queen-size mattress, only $4.99. The perfect synergy of comfy Bobapedic memory foam and individually wrapped inner spring coils made the old-fashioned way, not with robots, but with actual fleshy hands. Let me show you. This clearly isn't a robot. This is Jessica, happily at work on my Synergy mattress. She works at one of my favorite partner manufacturers right here in the USA. And look here, this is Boom Boom, also not a robot. <laughs> I see what you did there, Boom Boom. My Synergy queen-size mattress, only $4.99, made by humans, not robots. Bob's Discount Furniture. There's never been a better time to donate to Goodwill. Tomorrow on Good Morning Indiana. A summer-like feel over the next few days with temperatures in the 80s. Plus, the city and county are looking to fill dozens of government jobs. And be the sixth caller at 6 a.m. for your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to Holiday World. You spent this winter shivering, and you're about to start sweating. The time is now for new Champion windows. Stay comfortable year-round with our exclusive Comfort 365 windows and save big. Buy one window, get one window 50% off. 50% off. Plus, 60 months low interest financing. We have saved 25 to 30% on our energy bill since installing the windows, which blew my mind. For buy one, get one 50% off, go online or call 888-930-CHAMPION today. 
Take you back 11 years ago. A visit with Graham and Bobby Rahal at their home in central Ohio. The son clearly ready to carry on the family tradition. Well, Graham's quite a bit older than 19 now, and he's already making racing his business as well. As we welcome you back here to the Speedway, you'll hear the name Rahal and you hear think of racing. Well, they'll be working this weekend toward fast speeds here at the Speedway, and Graham's helping others find those fast speeds as well just down the road in Brownsburg. This is one of the few times you'll find Graham Rahal not going fast. When he's not on the track, Graham's helping weekend racers go fast too. The main focus for us here is to build cool cars. Suspensions, you know, exhaust we manufacture and, you know, sell exhaust systems, brake packages. Most of it cross pollinated with racing stuff. The Graham Ray Hall Performance Shop is located on the edge of Brownsburg. With the right car and the right amount of money, the crew here can make fast cars faster and nice cars even nicer. All these things kind of came together. I, you know, I had worked with a lot of these companies in racing. Uh, it just made sense to come here and to be able to do that and grow it here on this sort of platform. Ray Hall's always been a car guy. The shop was just a natural extension of his tendency to tinker and his passion for performance. It's been in my head, you know, pretty much my, pretty much my entire life. Um, you know, my brother works here, my brother Jared is here with me. And it really started with he and I as a kid messing around with everything in the car, you know, in the garage, messing around with dad's cars, uh, you know, tweaking things. And, you know, it was probably just like a pipe dream at the time. And sometimes I think it should have stayed a pipe dream. <laughs> but, uh... So what's the best way to make your car track ready? Hand it over to a guy who's gone fast on the track his whole life. Like this car now has silver brake calipers with lettering on the calipers that match the paint of the car. Like Porsche doesn't offer that, nobody offers that. So we make it unique. So now this guy has a one of one. We're, we're lean and mean here a little bit. Um, you know, just gotta help out. I mean, you, you have to, you know, where you can and that's kind of my job as well. GRP sits right across the street from John Force Racing, doing business right alongside his father-in-law. How is it having, having the neighbors, having the uh, having pops across? Well, it's good, yeah. You know, John's across the street. He's also our land, landlord. He's way too expensive. But aside from that, our ra yeah, 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 yeah. Our race team is right next door too. So it's a great area for us. I have a lot of plans, you know. I mean, my mind never stops. When it comes to growth, I'm always on it, probably too much. I think about it too much maybe. But uh, this, is, this is here to stay. Um, we're here to try to take care of the community and let everybody here locally have some fun. Up next, how much fun for you as a dad? The early stages of it is the best because that's when everything is just new. It's that old familiar feeling for Ryan Hunter Ray. How the love of racing will be a family affair for years to come. Plus, it's back to where it all started for Gordon Johncock. A throwback Thursday with a legendary two-time 500 champ. When this trackside six special continues. Got it. Three OMG inducing season finales. Here we go. First on Grace, an arresting cover up. Why is my star resident in handcuffs? And Station 19 is trapped in the line of wildfire. Fire then on For the People, it's Kiss and Tell. She knows about us. It doesn't have to be a problem. You know it is. TGIT season finales tonight on ABC. Remember that time we wanted a classic burger, but we also wanted a spicy chicken sandwich? I remember that. Two sandwiches for $3.50? You're a cheap date. Is this a date? I think this is a date. Get two sandwiches all to yourself, plus fries and a drink for $3.50. Rallies and checkers. Best foodies know the deal. Almost every closet can be divided into four distinct categories. First, there are clothes that you wear. There are clothes you don't wear. Clothes that you can't wear and clothes you shouldn't wear. At Goodwill, we gladly accept all of these, giving you the opportunity to buy more of these. She never does a thing for herself, but she never skimps on us, so it hurt to see how self-conscious she was about her teeth. She'd cover her mouth, looked at the floor when she talked, but this was perfect. Now we understand why they call it Turning Point. It was like a new start. The consultation was free. 
They did something that even I couldn't do. They made my wife smile. For a new permanent smile, call Turning Point Dental Implants and live out loud. Forget festivals. Have you been to a Rallies and Checkers Festival? We're talking steak on a juicy burger smothered in cheese. Steak covered in French onion sauce and crispy onions. There's even steak loaded up on fries. Just $2 each. Rallies and Checkers. Fast foodies know the deal. May of 2014, the morning after, Ryan Hunter Ray wins the 500. Little Ryden still in his matching yellow race suit. Now that little boy is growing up fast, ready to go just as fast as Dad. Welcome back live to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Hard to think now that Ryan Hunter Ray will be trying to qualify for his 12th Indy 500. You know his three sons will be watching. That includes Ryden Hunter Ray as it's becoming like father, like son. Palm trees and the shadows of the Homestead Miami Speedway, you'll find AMR Motorplex. More and more, you'll find Ryan Hunter Ray, followed by his six year old son, Ryden. First time he was in a cart, how old was he? Oh boy. Well, my dad actually bought him the go kart when he was two, I think. So, <laughs> but his first time, his first time in a go kart was probably, he was probably four. Uh, just, you know, messing around. <laughs> He's still just messing no, around, just, trying to uh, look the part first. Good job. Get your belt on. Still learning what goes where. <laughs> There's one side. Get the other. <laughs> Get the other. No, you're missing. Right hand. Right here. Over here. Learning left right hand. and right. Right, right hand. Look. Over there. Yep, there you go. Velcro it together. There it is. Let's see that. Nice. But the driver's suit is just the start. This is the hardest part of the whole deal with him. It's the gloves. Get your fingers in the holes. Oh, you're missing this one. This finger <laughs> needs to go in this one, okay? And if it goes according to plan, little Ryden will be getting suited up for years to come. You know you're going to have fun when you have to put on a lot of stuff. I love racing so much. It's my life. and. It's inevitable that, that we, we're going to share it together, and, and I have two younger kids, too, that are going to need their, their crack at it. So it's, it's going to be expensive, and it's going to be fun, but uh, who, who knows where it goes, as long as, as a family, we're having a good time. Suited up and throttled down, they're off again. Ryan leading Ryden at first to help teach the racing line. All with Ryan's father, Nick, talking to Ryden on the two-way radio. Now full throttle all the way to the start finish and go fast to the corners. Adding another level to the family bonding, it was just 25 years ago when Ryan's dad was doing the same for him. Keep your foot right in it, don't lift. Go as fast as you can to that corner, 100% throttle. It's gotta be fun for him to kind of do this a second time now. Yeah, it is fun. It's fun to see him doing it, yeah. Um, you know, grandparents, they always love it, you know, spending time with their grandkids because they can just drop them off and they're done with them, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. it's, it's great to be able to share it with my dad again, with him, and we're, we're kind of, we're just starting that, that getting into the karting thing, so. We'll ease into it, right, right? <laughs> Good job, Doodle. Each break comes complete with the debrief. Good? Apples? Boom. Focus on. Well, you don't have to go flat out right away on through all the corners. But what, what we'll focus on is we need to start carrying more speed to the corners. Okay, see that? Focused and looking forward to the next session. After a drink of Gatorade, of course. This is the same guy that I was throwing up in the air after winning uh, the Indy 500. So yeah, that happened fast. <laughs> It was 2014. Ryan with a dramatic dive in turn three. Left right behind him. Almost got into the grass to make the pass. Ryan Hunter Ray with a bad time move in the entrance to three. Back in front of Indianapolis. And held on to the lead for the final three laps. It is Ryan Hunter Ray that is going to lead Elio Castro Nevis across the line. Ryan Hunter Ray has his first Indianapolis 500 mile race win. And there to celebrate afterwards in an identical DHL fire suit was then one-year-old Ryan. Do you remember that? You don't remember winning the Indy 500, do you? Bummer. See? So now you have to win the Indy 500 yeah. again. So. <laughs> and I told him last time we won it, I, I offered him the milk and he didn't drink it. So he says, Daddy, this time, you're going to drink the milk if we win? 
Huh? You sure? A little bit or a lot? A lot? A lot. <laughs> One more run for the day with one more corner to perfect and one more line to finish. It'll be this way for years to come. And for Ryan, he can't wait. What's your favorite part about uh, karting? Uh, the The straightaway, why? Because I like to go fast. Yeah, because you like to go fast. I went karting with my dad and we shared a lot of those memories together and now I'm doing it with my son. And, uh, the karting days are the best because it's all pure, all about having fun and sharing that love race. Five. Coming up, a throwback. If somebody asked me how to drive into your race car, I don't know if I could even tell him. He was all out on the race course. And in retirement, Gordon Johncock is still that way. Day first with rare access to the two-time Indy 500 champ. Next on Trackside 6. Nothing like taking myself out to rallies and checkers. I love it too. Remember that time we wanted a classic burger, but we also wanted a spicy chicken sandwich? I remember that. Then we got both a classic burger. And a spicy chicken sandwich. Two sandwiches for $3.50? You're a cheap date. Is this a date? I think this is a date. Get two sandwiches all to yourself. Pick from a spicy chicken sandwich and a juicy classic burger. Plus fries and a drink for $3.50. You look great today. I wanted to look nice for you. Rallies and checkers. Best foodies know the deal. This little light of mine. Before my stroke, I was a police officer. After my stroke, I was not able to speak. I wasn't able to walk. The reason that I started teaching was to help the kids going through challenges. Because of Indiana Wesleyan, I will have a second career. I'm David Slaughterbeck, and I am shining brighter. You are a light, and with a little help from Indiana Wesleyan University, your light can shine brighter than you ever thought possible. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine. The Andy 500 is on at Andy Moore Ford in Plainfield, where more means more. Save 15000 off MSRP on a new 2019 F-150. Or buy a new 2018 Focus for only $14,995. This May, take the pole position with crowd-pleasing deals and transparent pricing. Find your new Ford on our 40 acres at Andy Moore Ford in Plainfield. Finish faster when you start your deal online at andymoreford.com. For you, maybe fresh means colorful, cool, local. Yeah, we get you, and we've got that at prices worth celebrating. Did you cut the cord? We got you covered. Apple TV, Roku, YouTube, Fire Stick, Android TV, PlayStation View, Hulu. Just search RTV6 on your streaming service. RTV6 is working for you. It doesn't always snow in South Branch, Michigan. It just seems that way. The most we've got this winter at any one time is, I don't know, five or six inches. But it is where you'll find Gordon Johncock moving wood chips here and there into his new Mack truck, complete with a Borg Warner Trophy keychain. For the last nine years, the 82-year-old Michigan native running John Cock Forestry. If we work 24-7, we couldn't cut enough that our customers want. The sawmill made up of two dozen workers starting their day at 5 a.m. We've got a lot going on here. We have to keep our logs separate. This is all pine. Coordinating the production of bark, sawdust, and wood chips. You can see the difference in the size of logs you get. And as you might imagine, it's a rather natural transition for someone who grew up on an 80-acre farm driving a tractor at the age of five. My dad had me working right from as almost as soon as I could walk, I guess. Uh, I was five years old, and he had me cultivating corn with an OGP John Deere that had the hand clutch in it. His time at Indy was also never dull. The hard-charging John Cock won his first 500 in 1973, the culmination of a tumultuous month made up of tragic accidents and days of rain delays. Still, the more pressure that I had put on me, 
when I was racing, or racing against some, a certain individual out there, another car, I think the more pressure that was put on me, the better I did. There was 1977, Gordy eyeing a much more joyful win, but while leading A.J. Foyt, he suffered a broken crankshaft on lap 184. Blew an engine and gave Foyt his fourth race and got out of the car and went and laid down in the crib. That was hot for one thing. That has to be the biggest disappointment of my whole life. But redemption came five years later. A duel with Rick Mears came to a head of the pits when Gordy's crew gave him enough fuel just to finish the race. A 13 second pit stop. Mears' crew accidentally filled him all the way, taking several seconds longer. If Rick had been there as long as I had been there, he probably would have got by me. Instead, John Cox able to hold off Mears to win by just 16 hundredths of a second. All right, so did someone ask you to hold up the number two, or was that a natural reaction? I don't remember. <laughs> Newspaper clippings are never too far away in his Michigan home. He and his wife Sue proudly display the baby Borgs and the Channel 6 checkered flag award. Gordy's 10 cats don't seem to mind either. The times may change, but here in South Branch, how he hopes he's remembered never will. I guess it's someone that uh, always tried to do their job right, you know, uh, tried to be competitive, and I'd done my job and done it right. Qualifying starts Saturday at 11, then on Sunday at noon, they'll bump for the last row, and the Fast 9 will go for the pole and decide the first three rows. Should be an exciting one here at the Speedway. Qualifying this weekend, two things. No, it doesn't always snow in South Branch, Michigan, and I brought some samples. Some I'm good, just, that's some good wood. There's some history <laughs> behind these wood chips, everyone. Hey, enjoy <laughs> qualifying weekend and our coverage all weekend long here on RTD6 tonight. Trackside 6, sponsored by Turning Point Dental.